interesting World Series. A lot of, lot of twists and turns, a lot of craziness. Uh, uh, what's your thoughts? What's the big picture for you on this World Series? Well, two very similar teams, great offenses and great bullpens, and uh, right now look like weak rotations. The rotations were good enough to get by, but we've got Carpenter, who's the best of uh, the starters in this uh, World Series. He's got a little bit of an elbow issue. And, uh, I mean, Wilson has just been uh, not good at all. Um, it's uh, the rotations have been weak, but both guys will have quick hooks. Uh, Larusa naturally has a quick hook, and I think uh, Washington will uh, follow suit. And uh, you know, he says he can't match wits with uh, Larusa, but you know, he'll try his best to put his guys in position. Smart. And very smart. He's got a shot. Smart idea from Washington. You know, genuflect towards Larusa and then go out there and beat him. A very smart, <laughs> very smart idea. Very, very, very smart idea by Washington, who is you know showed himself that he knows how to handle a team. You know that keeping him was a very good idea. Sometimes. You know, the moves you make or the firings you don't make. I mean, the guy basically did a fireable offense, but they kept him, and he's turned out to be a good manager for them. There's no question about that. The players on the team absolutely love him. They know he's not La Russa in terms of strategy. I even asked Darren Oliver about who's the best manager in the game, and he says La Russa, the guy on the other side. So he genuflected a little bit, too. La Russa is definitely the best strategist. But Washington, as he says, has put them in position. He's a terrific guy, and obviously he made that one mistake. Uh, which we reported on uh, a, a couple years ago, but uh, he's come back strong from that. I think if that actually, I think now maybe I'm um, I'm helping my patting myself here, but I, I actually think. Well, that, you broke uh, the story. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean that happens. But I, what, what, I, what I was going to say is, I, I actually think that uh, if it hadn't come out. He was on a short leash at that point. But once it came out publicly, and then they had to support him again publicly, they supported him behind the scenes, clearly. They made that decision to support him, and I, I give them all credit for that. But once it comes out, and now they've supported him publicly, he's got a little more of a chance because I think they went into that season with it, with this unknown uh, with him on a very short leash, and uh, he needed to get off to a good start. He did get off to a good start anyway. But uh, I know that the guys in that uh, team just, just adore him uh, personally. And the other thing is you wonder – uh, in this year where Lee lost four, blew a 4 nothing lead, in the year where the pitches in both a- a- LCSs were blown away for the most part, you wonder about you know people maybe paying a little different look at building rotations because, I mean, this is the year of the bat and the bullpen. It's not the year of the starting pitcher in the postseason. Right. We've been through this for probably a decade and a half now where we've favored the team with that great rotation. The Braves for a decade, they only won once, and now the Phillies are supposedly the favorite team. And they did look like the best team over 162. And may, maybe, maybe, I know it's not a 15 years is a fairly small sample size, but maybe it shows that that starting pitching is really needed over the 162, but over the shorter span, it's not as important. Now, that's the opposite of the way we looked at it for years. But uh, I think the, the, the value of, of great arms in that pen uh, is rising. I know Bobby Valentine was always a proponent of the big arms in the pen, and uh, both these teams have that. St. Louis had an atrocious bullpen for half a year, and then uh, making Mott the closer was huge, but that trade that everybody hated of talented Colby Rasmus going for Zebchinski, Dotel, and Jackson, everybody hated that trade from St. Louis. I mean, without that trade, you know, I don't agree with La Russa that they're below 500, but they're definitely not a playoff. And listen, Dotel's been everywhere. He's had a million chances. I mean, let's be honest. Dotel now becoming a star is an amazing story. The guy's been on 150 teams. And, and you know what? He's he's uh, made himself a reputation now as a Ryan Braun killer. So anybody in that division yeah, I mean, want he, him. And I think Milwaukee will probably want him just he, to keep him away from Ryan Braun. It's amazing what he does to Braun. I mean, it's he, a, can't, he, he it. can't see it. He, no, can't, it does. he doesn't even have good swings against them. Terrible. It looks like me up there. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. amazing how much he can't hit him. It's unbelievable. I mean, that, it is. And, and Ogando has been sensational. He reminds me of a young Mariano in 95 or 96. You know that? Right. He had a good year as a starter, and their intention is to make him a starter again next year, but I think they're going to try to make Feliz a starter, too. I don't think they anticipate Wilson going back back to them. I think they think Wilson's going to leave as a free agent. Their, their hope is to make both of these guys as, as starters. I think there's some skepticism out there from scouts of whether Ogando is long-term a starting pitcher, but you know, it's hard to doubt that John Daniels or any of the Texas people uh, who they decide to make a starter or reliever. It really has worked out for yeah, them. Yeah, Ogando's been well. unhittable. I mean, and the guy's yeah. been since eight. Converted like Mott, a converted 
uh, a converted position player. I think Mott, is he from Iona? Somewhere in the area, I think. But both converted position players. And uh, the backstory on Ogando is fascinating, too, where he got in trouble and wasn't going to get to the United States for five years after marrying uh, somebody due to a visa situation. And I, I, he was in big trouble. And they got him for $12,000 from the Oakland amazing. A's, their competitor. It's amazing what they've done to their competitors. They got Ogando for 12000 from Oakland. They got Napoli in that horrendous horrendous trade for uh, basically a three-team trade with uh, the Angels, um, where the Angels took Vernon Wells, paid $80 million more for a non-productive guy and gave away one of the most productive hitters in baseball, and also signing Beltre, who says flat out he came to Texas because he wants to win. Now, of course, the $80 million doesn't hurt, but he said he had bigger offers elsewhere. I'm not sure where they were. If It, it probably was Oakland, if it's somebody, because I, I think the Angels were at $75 million. Unbelievable. I, I, they, listen, John Daniels has done a great job. He was with us the other day. All right, let's get to a couple other things. We're talking with John Heyman. Paul Hulse, you think he stays or leaves? I think he stays, even without this run. I, I just didn't see him as, as valuable. He's valuable to anybody, but as valuable to anyone else as he is to the Cardinals. And I, I do think, well, the Cardinals aren't a Huge market team. They're very profitable. They can afford them. They've already offered them nine years for over $200 million. They can change it a little bit. My understanding is they're telling people that this is all they have in the budget. Of course, now they get to the World Series, so you know, even if they said that was all they had in the budget, they should be able to squeeze a little bit more for him now. He's, I mean, he's done so many little things. People Just seeing him day to day, you realize how good he is on the base pass, how good he is on the field. The guy is just a terrific all-around player, not only the best hitter in baseball. You know, I, I think they'll come to an agreement. They might lower the years and, and prop up the, the dollars a little bit. I'm, I'm going to guess eight for 220, but we'll, we'll see. I, I think he'll be back. 